Most of us are celebrating tonight Ireland's remarkable win against Italy, which brings them through to the second round of the European Championships. We, however, have to deal with a more so so sober subject tonight, that of abortion, uh, sober that is, until discussion ignites uh, people on both sides of the argument. Yes, the abortion issue is back centre stage yet again, an issue which has obsessed Irish politics for over 30 years now. It is expected there will be a referendum sometime next year on the repeal of the Eighth Amendment, which gave equal protection to the life of the unborn, uh, equal protection to the life of the unborn and the life of the mother. And next week, Mick Wallace, the Rexford Independent TD, will be introducing a bill in the doll allowing for, uh, for abortion where the unborn is suffering from fatal fetal abnormality. To discuss this with us tonight, we have Carla Sherlock of the Pro-Life Campaign and Ruth Coppinger, Anti-Hysterity Alliance, People Before Profit TD for Dublin West. If you'd like to comment on the program, you can text us at 53131, pay the word tonight. Before a comment, send us a tweet at hash from beer, email us at tonight at tv3.ae. Did either of you watch the match? Did either of you see the goal? Yes. Yep. I actually uh, didn't watch the full match, but I saw the missed goal and then saw the successful goal. So, you saw, fair you saw, play. Yeah. They played well. How do you, I think it's fantastic. Good for them. And yeah, Ireland good for has us. won the right to life in, <laughs> the, in the, uh, for the next round of the championship. On. What? We play on, thankfully. Do you think everybody has the right to life? And not, not just talking about unborn now, but everybody has the right to life. Like, are you sure the thing. Do you think Fine Gael has the right to life, uh, Ruth? <laughs> <laughs> a bores, I think. It was, it well, was it, a well. It, you're kind of raising a real esoteric argument, but the, the reality of it is, if you look around the globe, most people who are born don't have a decent life because the world is, uh, has so much poverty and inequality, and those aren't the issues that we hear about when we hear the term right to life. It seems to be just the right of the unborn to be born, that seems to be the concern of people who use that phrase. Um, I, so well, I think that some people who are what they call pro-life in, in the sense that they support the right to life of the unborn, and many of them also are concerned about the denial of the right to life of people who are born. I haven't noticed, it tends to be people on the left of the political spectrum uh, <coughs> who, you know, who you see on anti-austerity marches who you see protesting and challenging when measures are introduced that impact on the lives of women and of children. And that's been my experience that the people who tend to be anti-abortion don't extend their concern very much beyond when the person's born. Whereas what I'm concerned about is creating a world where every single human being who's born is chosen to be born, uh, th that the people raising them have sufficient means to bring them up, have access to water, to education, to a home, something that we don't even have in this country right now. And uh, not just kind of this esoteric argument about the right to life. We should be trying to create a decent life for everybody and let people have a choice about whether they can bring children into the world. Many, in fact, would like to and don't have that right right now. Why do you, why do you say that? I think that uh, Ruth brings up a couple of interesting points there, but uh, the, the interesting thing for me is that she talks about all of these very important rights, the right to water, the right to a home and so on, but the most basic human right is the right to be born. If you don't have the right to be born when you are already alive in your mother's womb, then you don't have the chance to enjoy any of those rights. So it's a little bit uh, facetious yeah. to say, let's fight for those rights, right but ignore the right to be born. Anyway, do people not really have the right to life? And I, I, I think the language of rights is very problematic because uh, how does a person who is, for, for instance, dying of kidney failure, do they have the right to somebody else's kidney? I don't think so. And somebody, do, does everybody in the third world, the children in the third world who are dying of starvation, do they have the right to life in any meaningful sense that the rest of us would be required to give them sustenance? I don't think people understand it in that way. Well, at the moment, uh, Oxfam released we'll a survey. We'll get around to talk. We'll yeah, go to a break in a moment. We'll get, get to the meat of the issue we want to discuss. Which showed that about 68 people, 68 billionaires on the planet, have the same wealth as half of the, the right population. Right, yeah. You know, so this has to inform these discussions as well. If we want to bring this back to Ireland and the <sighs> current situation, where we have about nine or ten women each day leaving the country every year, 
to access abortion because they can't access it in this country. It used to be more, but actually a lot of women are accessing abortion pills now in their own bedrooms and they don't leave the country to do so. But they do so in our own country and in a okay, criminality okay. and shame. Okay, we'll get to discuss the central issues just after the break. Join us then. 30 years after it first became a major issue in Irish politics, ab abortion is back on the agenda yet again. There's likely to be a referendum on the repeal of the Eighth Amendment. The Eighth Amendment was the one that, uh, in the Constitu that was inserted into the Constitution to give equal right to life to the unborn uh, with the life of the mother. Uh, and that's going to be, almost certainly, there's going to be a referendum on that sometime next year. But also, next week in the Dáil, Mick Wallace, the independent TD for Wexford, is going to introduce a bill in the Dáil uh, which would allow for abortion in Ireland in the case of fetal, fetal ab abnormality. And we're going to discuss these issues. And with us are Cora Sherlock of the Pro-Life Campaign and Ruth Coppinger, uh, Anti-Austerity Alliance People Before Profit, um, who is very much in favour of equal, of I think a pro-choice issue on, on the question of abortion. If you'd like to comment on the program, you can text us at 53131, place the word tonight. Before you comment, send us a tweet at hash or b or email us at tonight at tv3.ie. Let's deal with the fet fetal fetal abnormality issue, uh, Ruth. The, uh, Enda Kenny has said that the advice of the Attorney General is that this is unconstitutional. That it cannot be, uh, a, that, that it cannot be constitutional for a bill to be introduced in the doll that takes the life of a child that is born ho for ho however short a time. I think the argument of the people who put the bill on fatal fetal abnormality is, and it seems to me an absolutely strong one, that uh, uh, life outside the womb, uh, if a, a fetus is incompatible <coughs> with life outside the womb, well, therefore, it isn't a life well, and, and doesn't what have does that. that mean now? That does, it, does that mean that it's unlikely to survive beyond an hour, beyond, um, beyond a second, beyond a minute, beyond five minutes, beyond an hour, beyond a few days? What, what, uh, does, that, what does it mean? Well, I, I think that that would be... Uh, nobody could predict that. You know, nobody can predict exactly. Well, but suppose I, the, person, the, the, the fetus or the unborn, the, the baby were to live, for instance, a year. Would that be, would, would, would that be compatible? No, that's not a fatal fetal abnormality. It will be that shortly after it's born. To, but, to but me, that for some time after it's born, it's alive. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. But the, the point is that the government, the last government ruled that it was, their advice was that it was not allowable within the Eighth Amendment for that. Now, doesn't it say a lot about the Eighth Amendment that a fetus that won't be able to survive is actually given, you know, precedence over a woman's decision and not actually given equality? And I think that this is going to cause a real problem for the independents who went into the government, people like John Halligan, people like Finian McGrath, Catherine Sapone, who wasn't in the last all, but these other independents who would have voted for the last fatal fetal abnormality bill. Now, we've already had a situation where the UN has condemned Ireland for inhumane and cruel treatment of Amanda Mellis, a woman who bravely took a case and exposed her personal situation because she wanted to challenge what had happened to her and prevent it happening to other women. Tell people what happened to her. What happened to her was she had a, diagnos a diagnosis of fatal fetal abnormality and was forced to obviously pay to have an abortion in, in England. Uh, which was very expensive, but also she was forced to return to the country within a very short period of hours after having that abortion. She then, because she couldn't afford to, yeah, to, to um, yeah. stay over. Yeah. Yeah. And you see, just to say, Amanda Mellet and the organisation that represents women and families in those situations, termination for medical reasons, what they call for is repeal of the Eighth Amendment. Uh, all right, but you know, just they, on the case of the Mick Wallace bill, uh, the Constitution clearly states, uh, the Eighth Amendment says, the state acknowledges the right to life of the unborn and with due regard to the equal right to life of the mother, guarantees in its laws to respect and as far as practicable by its laws to defend and vindication of that right, uh, and, and vindicate that right. Um, so it's hard to see how if the uh, unborn baby were to 
ex were to live for even a, a minute or two outside the womb, that, uh, a, that abortion would be permissible under Irish law at present. Vincent, I think that the real question is, I think you'd find it hard to find anyone in the country who thinks the situation that Amanda Mellet and other women have been put through is acceptable. Maybe Cora does, or maybe some people in her group do, but very few people do. In fact, in all okay. of the polls that have been done, okay. there's only about 5% of that's people. That's a different point. The issue is, the first instance is... is well, it's not really, because the point is, are we going to continue to ignore that issue? All right. Uh, Cora. Yeah. I mean, I think that people watching at home, Vincent, will be quite shocked by some of the things that Ruth has said. Um, shocked, firstly, by the fact that she admits that there is no way to know how long a baby will survive outside the womb. That, that is the, that is the, that is the medical, no, that is the medical reality. So what we're talking about next week is a political bill. That's what's, what's taking place. It's not based on any medical fact. Um, Ruth talks about cases where, where women have, um, have wanted to terminate pregnancies in those cases. But what we are losing and what we won't hear next Tuesday are the stories of families who wanted to continue with their pregnancies and who were um, subjected to pressure in some cases uh, not to go ahead. And I'm told, you know, well, I mean, that, Ruth, that would be, but, uh, yeah, it is a travesty. Abominable anyway. Yeah. But it is a, an abomination that happens in this country. And the only, reason, the only reason that we don't hear about it is because those families are not given a platform. They Maybe won't the be. reason we don't hear about it is because it doesn't happen. No, no, that's not, that's not true. Well, and can you tell us how, how you know it happens? Because if people if are... If we don't hear about it. Yeah, because these families come forward. They are actually involved so with the pro-life movement it. in Ireland. No, they come forward to the pro-life movement All in right, Ireland, so but they don't get a platform on shows like this yet, but I'm hoping that the debate will widen to give them room to tell their stories. For example, next Tuesday when, the, um, when this bill is discussed in the Dáil, will there be room for, as you say, families to come forward and talk about how one family to give you an example of one family that I know, their baby had anencephaly, he lived for 17 minutes. And, you know, where some people will say that uh, that life wasn't worth living, and we'll probably hear terrible things like that said in the Dáil next week, as we have heard before when this issue comes up. That baby lived for 17 minutes. His mother said um, that every day of the pregnancy, she, got, she spent time with that baby in a different way than she did with her healthy pregnancies because she knew that the time was limited. She also said that her baby taught her um, she had been a perfectionist beforehand, but she realized after that pregnancy that perfections, imperfections rather, can be something very beautiful. So that's something that that baby achieved in his 17-minute life. And that sort of experience is completely whitewashed out of the debate that we're having in Ireland at the moment. And I think that's really sad, and I think that the public is deprived of that experience. Well, not you, not just the family, that, but Vincent... You're, 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 you're talking about that, so you can't say the public doesn't know about it. Yeah, you're, but I mean, I'm talking, just, about it. I'm talking about it there on is one show. There's nobody in the pro-choice movement who favours Ruth, people I didn't, being forced to have abortions, I didn't, Cora. I didn't, interrupt you, you are saying that. I didn't interrupt you, Ruth. The reality is, Vincent, if you look around the country, and when these families do get the chance to tell their stories, what becomes very evident is that choice becomes pressure but, in but, these situations. But, but this whole there, idea if, that if that's dealt with, if that's dealt with then, mm. would, you, would you say, oh, well, okay, it's okay for, for an abortion to take place there in the case of fatal fetal There isn't such a thing as dealing with the whole concept of choice becoming pressure, because once you introduce abortion into a country, once you say, as this bill is trying to say, that unhealthy, seriously disabled babies in their mother's wombs are not entitled to the same rights as you or I, Vincent. It's not saying that. You have crossed a Rubicon. It is what it is saying, Ruth. You've crossed a Rubicon in human rights protection. And the question then becomes, who is next? In England at the moment, 90% of babies diagnosed with Down syndrome are aborted. That's not They're true either. That is true, Ruth. And I'm sorry, it's but not. the and official... And it's actually insulting the to people with Down syndrome record, to say that. That is, not, that is not true. There's nothing insulting about the official, the official records, Vincent, okay. that the Department okay. of Health R R R show. Yeah. Okay, I think it's very important not to confuse things. Uh, people who have had a diagnosis of fatal fetal abnormality, it's clear that the fetus can't live outside the womb. That's completely different to somebody who has a child that's born with a disability. And to confuse the two issues is highly insulting to people. Secondly, in relation to Down syndrome, I've heard you use that figure a lot. And I've heard people who have children with Down syndrome challenging you on that figure. 
of 90%. That's just a and fact, Vincent. It, it, I didn't okay. make it up. Well, even it, it isn't true. I think it's about... It, but also the point well, what is... what is it then, Ruth, the, okay, if it's not true? Well, hang what on, I'll, I'll tell you. The point is, even if it was true... Which it is. Which it isn't. Okay, well, I'll, tell, I'll give you a figure, right? Um, there's some statistics that were done in England and Wales from 2008 to 12. Uh, some statistics and they showed now isn't very credible. What 44 are, who's, who, statistics, what statistics are you talking about? 44% of pregnancies that got a prenatal Downs diagnosis were Ruth, born. Okay? Ruth, Ruth, some statistics say is meaningless. And like, how do you know that, that somebody didn't make up those statistics? What, is, what, from, what authority is that statistics based on? Those statistics based on? It's based from uh, organisations that deal with Down syndrome. Yeah, tell us, uh, what organisations? Well, what, ones, what came organizations? Up, well, what ones came up with the 90% of the Cora? Vincent, can I say something as well? Okay, can I say something as well? Something that your group says on, on a regular basis is that the, for example, the Eighth Amendment abortion ban has saved thousands of lives in this country. Even if it was the case that 90% of women were choosing, right? We can't be forcing people. People have to have that choice and make that choice for themselves. It's a personal decision that people have to make. If they choose to carry on with a pregnancy, they deserve the full support of society, including, by the way, you know, all of the things that people need who bring children into the world that have a disability. And I've met parents who have children with disability. I actually met two women during the election who said to me that they supported what I say about the Eighth Amendment and, and the pro-choice position. Okay, but just deal with the issue of fetal fetal ab abnormality for a moment. You said statistics show that, uh, and then you don't, you're not able to tell us where those statistics come from. So that's hardly syndrome. persuasive. Okay, well, uh, first uh, of all, uh, in relation to fatal fetal abnormality, I, I'm not moving the bill. Right. So just to make that point. But I was there for the last debate that did take place in the Dáil. And it was clear that there was huge embarrassment on the part of TDs. You know, the idea that we would send women out of the country facing that situation is just completely unacceptable. But according to the Attorney General's advice, the government claims, which we never saw, we have to repeal the Eighth Amendment to account for that. Okay. And that's the reality. Okay. What, uh, Cora, what would be wrong with a, agreeing to a bill that allows for the, uh, uh, for the abortion of a fetus or an unborn child, where, th where that unborn child's, where the condition of that unborn child is incompatible with life? What would be so bad with such a bill being passed when it wouldn't apply to situations where the uh, ch the child, uh, the baby in question, lived for a minute after birth. You see, I think, okay, what have we established already in this discussion, Vincent? Firstly, that there is no way to know how long a baby will live for. That is a reality. The term fatal fetal abnormality okay. is not a medical term. The term incompatible with life is not a medical term. They're we're terms not talking about a medical term. Okay. We're, talk we're not talking about medical terms. We're talk talking essentially about legal terms. Mm -hmm. If you, one could show beyond reasonable doubt that a fetus was, uh, was on, on birth, on, on being born, would be incompatible with life because of condition that they had. Mm. That would be it, but it might be difficult to show that. Well, let's presume that you could show that a baby would be seriously ill or not going to live very long after he or, he, he or she was born. No, I don't think that we should introduce a law in this country allowing that baby's life to be ended because what we're talking about here is what kind of a society do we want to live in? Do we want to live in a society that says to a family facing a difficult diagnosis, we are here for you, we are going to put in place, we have a, a system already put in place, which we don't have in Ireland, um, of proper perinatal palliative care, which will help you through this difficult time and through the grieving process because many parents Vincent okay. say that meeting their baby is something very but, um, okay, but very is it, is, is, healing is that for us to decide or is it for the woman in question to decide it must be terribly traumatic for the woman in question and the woman in question might well feel look what I can't go through mm -hmm. with this I just can't do it emotionally physically I can't do it well, and it, shouldn't look, it be hard would decide look, that rather you than see, it, we the come state back, huh? we come back then again to the whole concept of choice becomes pressure because 
because that is what happens. If you look at other countries, what you hear are horrific stories. And this is a reality where women say that they go in for a scan and they are advised there and then there is something wrong with your baby. Your baby will not survive, most likely. You better have an abortion. Some women says that. No, that's hang that's on a ludicrous you know, claim. You the know, thing is, Vincent, why would it be in the interest of doctors Ruth, or nurses to say that to any woman? Ruth, can I, I didn't Vincent, interrupt can I you. Vincent, no, but you've cannot, had a good run at it. We cannot, and you did as well. But, you, we cannot have a debate in this country but, about but, this kind of thing. But, if we're but, going but, to have the sort of but, let's but, pretend but, but, it doesn't you've got happen, to come up. it this never happens. This thing of the pressure that these things women happen. are Women are pressured. Families are pressured. What's the evidence? Where's the evidence of such pressure? The evidence is coming forward from families who are coming to the pro-life movement in Ireland at the moment and saying we were put under pressure. It's coming from other countries as well. But what does pressure we, mean? There what, what do you mean by pressure? pressure? The type of pressure. That they were I, advised that they should have an abortion. No, no I, I know one family who were given, who were constantly told over constantly and over. Told. Uh, yes. Now every, are you sure of the word constantly? Yes. Because that sounds a wild exaggeration. No, no, it's not. Vincent. Constantly told is ridiculous. Every time. Nobody's constantly told anything. Every time they went to their doctor, they were told your baby will okay. not survive. Well, Vincent, they that won't happen. That's a different they point. Told, that won't well, happen in Ireland. That's a different because point. Because women they don't have told, that, that They were choice. told to the extent, Vincent, that they should pick out a graveyard plot for their baby. It upset them so much that they stopped going to their doctor. Their baby is now two years old. Okay, Vincent, okay. can I, can I so, please make a point you know, about that okay. this, this discussion, this issue of fatal fetal abnormality, it is very important. But it is a very small minority of cases of abortion. And I hope it's not going to dominate the whole discussion tonight. Because there are the vast majority of people who have unwanted crisis pregnancies, it isn't fatal fetal abnormality, it's for a whole variety of reasons. So it might be because of their age, they, they're too young, they're too old, it might be because of poverty, it might be because of health reasons, it might be they don't have support, they don't want children, they have too many children. So I, I think we have to deal with that those are the realities that most women are facing. Now, we could just get totally bogged down in, in, in that. Um, I think that we have to recognise a reality that women are leaving the country, that they will access abortion no matter what way, be it through okay. abortion pills, drones, trains, okay. planes, they okay. will find ways to access okay. abortion. We should have it in the health service here. Okay, we've got to take a break after the break. We'll continue the discussion and deal more specifically with the repeal of the Eighth Amendment. Join us then. We're not going to talk about the repeal of the Eighth Amendment and that is going to be referred apparently to a, an assembly of the people uh, fairly shortly by Enda Kenny and it will come up with a recommendation, I assume, within six months or so, and then there'll be a doll committee to discuss it, which will take another six months, and then I believe that there will be a referendum uh, on the repeal of the Eighth Amendment. Um, why, Cora, are you against the people having another decision on whether to retain the Eighth Amendment in the Constitution? I don't think it's so much why am I against a referendum, it's more what am I in favour of and I'm in favour of an Ireland that continues to do what we've always done so well which is to ensure that um, women are given a very high rate of maternal care in this country and at the same time their babies are given um, legal protection. Every human being in Ireland is valued under yeah. the law, so, every human being so is protected. So you wouldn't object to a referendum? No, I mean, the purpose of a, of a referendum is to instill and to insert human rights protections into our constitution. A referendum on the Eighth Amendment would be to try and remove so the right to life. Right, yes, I am. I you am. said it a moment ago that you weren't. That no, that no, wasn't I said the it point wasn't. Saying. I said, you the, said it wasn't it's, the point. It's a bigger point of what I want you, to yeah, see so, rather right, than what I'm but against. Why, why are you against the people deciding on whether to retain the Eighth Amendment? Or to repeat it. Well, like I said, I you is, know, the, it would be a democratic uh, decision. No, there, because a fundamental part of democracy, Vincent, is that we acknowledge human beings. Human beings are part of democracy, and you can't have one without the other. So, if you're going to have a referendum, which unborn tries, children don't have a vote in. Uh, but unborn children are still human beings. They're members of the human race, and they deserve protection. They are unborn babies who are. All right, but you're against allowing the people as a whole to decide whether to repeal the Eighth Amendment or not. Well, there are two issues here. Firstly, there is the referendum as a concept, the concept of removing a human right from our constitution. The second thing that is really that's important... A, that's an argument for voting against it from your perspective. Y yes, it is. But it's also an argument to say, why are we having such a referendum in the first place when we're a democratic country that uses because, our constitution because, because to protect it was, people? It, 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 because it was inserted um, by, uh, in 1983 
which was how many years ago? 33, 33 years mm -hmm. ago. And that a large number of people didn't have the right to vote in, uh, in 1983 and th they, th they should be consulted, particularly but, women. But, but there are lots of things that are, were inserted a long time ago that people don't have, don't have the right to vote on or didn't have the right to vote on. But we don't, we don't target them. Um, we don't say that, oh, that's so old. Human rights don't age. Human rights protections don't age. And that's one of the things that we were talking about earlier on. The whole concept of human rights and the right to life needs to be addressed because if we're going to have a referendum, we can't have it in okay. this let's isn't, pretend isn't that debate. Point? Isn't that a valid argument? Uh, Ruth, that for instance, you wouldn't support, I assume, a right, uh, the, the abolition of uh, the entitlement to free speech in the Constitution. You wouldn't support a referendum on that. You wouldn't be saying, well, the people had no decision and nobody, nobody's alive now who voted for that in 1937. Uh, the point is that attitudes change in society and there's clearly that is clearly the case based on not just anecdotes, although I have been out campaigning on this and have been amazed at the response from not just young people and women but actually women and people of all ages. So we have a situation where all the polls show that at least three quarters of people consistently say they want a referendum to repeal the Eighth Amendment. And, and we, right? should be we, should, we should be said by opinion polls, should we? No, but we, at the moment we don't... Then why have, do you bother referring at to them? The, because at the moment we don't have any other way of gauging it. Um, but we have a democratic deficit whereby the only way a referendum can be triggered in this country is if the doll <laughs> agrees to trigger it, and which involves... a deficit since uh, the doll is comprised of representatives of the people, elected by the people. Well, it isn't representing the people in this situation because... Uh, and the doll doesn't represent... I mean, the doll is generally male-dominated. It's generally yes, older. They get, they get elected by the people. That's, yes. And that's it. Yeah. And, and and, and the, the, well, the other issue is, uh, it was, you mentioned that this was brought in in 1983. There's no woman of childbearing age has had a vote on this, and this affects but, but I was a minority a point, I was of... making the point to you that, uh, that the fact that nobody ha has a right, uh, has voted on this, is, is a weak enough argument because, for instance, nobody uh, is alive now who voted for freedom of speech. And I don't think that you'd, be, you'd favour a referendum on removing the freedom of speech entitlement. Vincent, this is a serious issue for thousands of women every year, right? Women become pregnant, women decide that they don't want to continue those pregnancies, and then they have to find a way to either get out of this country or to access abortion pills online. It's a serious issue for young people. This is actually the civil liberties issue of this generation. Okay. Okay, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, that's interesting that, that Ruth uh, says it's a serious issue, Vincent. I think it's a very serious issue. I think that um, using things like abortion drones to fly pills into a country is not addressing the issue in a serious manner. Um, you know, bring them in on trains, that's being facetious, it's cheap publicity stunts. And Ruth has put her support to that. And I, you know, I think that, that is something which takes away from the seriousness well, of the debate. cheap publicity stunts. The pro-life campaign is not above cheap publicity stunts I, either. I don't think that's true. But let me, I, I have a question that I want to put to, to Ruth because earlier on she was talking about the UN and how the UN has condemned Ireland and it's true, the UN Human Rights Con Committee did condemn Ireland um, for its abortion laws. Not that I think it has any place to do so. Um, it said that we were cruel, inhumane and degrading. Um, a couple of weeks ago we had the pro-life campaign did have a, an event on the street where a woman called Melissa Oden came over and told her story and Melissa Oden's story is that when she was a baby in her mother's womb she was um, targeted through abortion uh, it was called a saline abortion and she survived the abortion she was left um, to one side in the hospital and the only reason that she survived is because a nurse heard her gasping for breath and that's the reason that she survived. So, so no, let me let me just finish to switch from a referendum let me, to that. Let me just finish because you see, this is the point, Vincent. Nobody on the pro-choice side in Ireland wants to discuss the reality of abortion. Now, if Ruth is going to sit here and quote the UN, and if other pro-choice campaigners are going to quote the UN over the last few weeks and days, as they have done, and push for the Citizens Assembly and push for a referendum. Was what happened to Melissa Oden to be aborted and left on a hospital counter to die cruel, inhumane and degrading?
That's a yes or no answer. Ruth. Sorry, uh, well, if you don't mind, you were asked a question. Would you allow people the democratic right to mm -hmm. say yes or no to and repeal of the no. Eighth Amendment? And, and she so said no. Yeah. Could you answer and, that? And, yeah, and she you, said no. no. Well, one minute you said yes, she, uh, but next minute you said no. No, well, no she, she came down firmly on the no side. So just answer her, the question she's just put to you. It, it's a ludicrous question. It's a I don't, yes or no I, question. No, I, I'm, I'm not going to answer a question. I know nothing about this person. I don't I've know just told about you the what situation. happened to her. I don't know she if it's was aborted. Sorry, she I, survived at seven months I don't and she was left to die. I don't know if it's manufactured. I know nothing well, about even it. Even if it is manufactured, <laughs> so, if it's just a theoretical uh, um, uh, problem, would, in those circumstances, would you think abortion is justified? I know nothing about the case. My, my point is this. Uh, like, was it cruel and inhumane and degrading? Well, let me answer it. The point is that women in this country will find a way to get abortion. And the only effect of the Eighth Amendment is to make it more costly, to make it later, and to make it more difficult. That's not but an answer, Ruth. He, what, what is argued by you is that if we keep abortion illegal, we, we, keep, we, we stop people having abortions. But that's not the case, because yeah. Ireland's abortion rate is 7.5 per thousand. It's See, higher this than is Switzerland. The problem. This is the Whereas, problem with the abortion sorry, debate, just, Can I just finish the sentence? There is no answers. But it's I, just where you, an unpleasant sorry, question. Finish. Sorry, but finish. where you have abortion made safe, legal and accessible, it's lower. The Netherlands has the lowest abortion okay. rate in the world and it's the most liberal. Uh, okay. So I, the effect of, of what you're saying is... Can I just, I, can I just ask you this question? Abortion is a uniquely moral issue um, because there are, no, there are no similar situations that apply, for instance, in regard to men or people in other circumstances, where a person is required under law at present, under criminal law at present, or, on, the, on the threat of criminal sanction, mm -hmm. to give their lives to the sustenance of another human being for a nine-month period or approximately a nine-month period. Irrespective of the consequences to them of so doing, how can that be justified? And since there are no, in no other circumstances would we require a human being to un undergo such strictures. Well, you see, the thing is that there are no other circumstances for the unborn baby to exist, Vincent. The, the, you know, his or her mother's womb is the natural environment for the unborn baby. Just, can I just reality. give an so, example? Suppose somebody tells you that this person is about to die of kidney failure and unless, and, and you happen to have the same blood sample and all that, and unless you give your kidney over to that person, immediately uh, this person will die. And uh, do you think that would be justified? But you see, we're not would talking, it just, it's, it's would not, it, would it be but it's not like with like, Vincent. But, well, it, it, it's not like with okay, like, though, just, because... Just before we get on to that, would it be justified? Would, that, would, would, it, would you favour a law that you would require people to give over their kidneys in such no, circumstances. No, because it, that is not, it's not Even a direct, be it's not a direct analogy. Life. So it's not, a, it's not a direct analogy. Why and I that? think in fairness... Why is that a direct analogy? Because it's not. It's Does just not, because it involves, it involves organ donation. It involves organ donation. That's right. It, it doesn't it, involve... It, not, it involves one person giving, giving, using, have, using their body to give sustenance to another yes, person. Yes, but it is not the same thing as an unborn baby in his or her womb, which is the natural environment for that baby to be in. That's the only place that that baby can be in for those nine months. After that nine months, that baby, or maybe shorter, that baby will be out in the world on his or her own and will be independent. Yeah. What we're it, talking about here, it, and what Ruth has not acknowledged, and I want that point to be, to go home with the viewers this evening, that when the going gets tough, unfortunately, <laughs> The pro-choice pro campaign don't want to answer the questions. We can't have a let won't answer the question. Like she said, that Melissa Oden's story, which was on, which was on the media over the last few weeks. And you're certainly milking it. I'll give you that. Go I on. mean, you know, no, 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 that's, that's really offensive. Go, go, go on, go on. It's, it's really just offensive to point. talk about. Finish you know, you talk about women, and then okay. you say milking it. Okay. This is a woman who was aborted and who's sharing her story all right. to educate Obviously, other that was people. An abortion that went all wrong. Probably shouldn't have happened in the first place because. Of the, the, it was beyond well, the time. Why shouldn't it have happened yeah, in the first place? Because it's beyond the permissible time that abortion should be allowed. But Ruth supports oh. abortion up to birth, Vince, and she doesn't want uh, any time. Oh, okay, limits. but that's different. That's a slightly different. <laughs> Ruth point. doesn't support abortion up to well, birth. What time well, limits do you the, support, Ruth? Well, I, I'll tell you, and it's, it's perfectly open about mm -hmm. it. The vast majority of abortions are carried out within 10 to 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. 
it's extremely rare that abortions will be carried out at such a up to birth and it so will what be time limits sorry do you support? if you ask me I, I really need to be able to answer the question in fairness I'll because it's so important now because yeah. okay go so it would only be done to intervene to save a woman's life and that's the reality and it keeps being cited as if it's the you know a daily occurrence which it isn't but you see that's a confusion I, vincent I okay. be. abortions are not necessary okay. to save women's lives ireland has a phenomenal no, record of course in the not. area of maternal well, I'm sorry. There's actually been okay, okay. you disputed I'm sorry, statistics I'm sorry, earlier I'm on. Sorry. So we, we no, just we no doubt we have mythology. similar debates on and on for the next year, two years, ten years. Um, we're going to take a break now, and after the break, we we'll get to tomorrow morning's news trip. Please join us then.